It's called the American Dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. We can't give you specific details, but um, you guys are more welcome to take a picture of just the sign, nothing else, okay. unfortunately. Cool. But yeah, thanks. Um, It's my perception that sustainability is either at the forefront of people's minds or is lurking in the back of their minds in a way that I haven't seen in my entire life before. You know, we all have the ability to make more sustainable personal lifestyle choices in our own lives. The clothes we wear, the food we eat, the places we go on vacation, the car we drive. I, I think that uh, sustainability is taking care of the system that we have now. Um, so that we're not exhausting the capacity of the system we have now to support future generations of humans and non-human counterparts. I think my personal definition of sustainability has to do with equity. Equity for everyone, no matter what your race, gender, abilities are. I really think that it is entirely a group effort. Um, not only people, but also all the beings on this planet. Um, I think sustainability is always looked on as just the environment and humans being separate from the environment. And that is something that is not true. Humans are part of the environment. And if we as a whole, as a community, do not respect each other, one another, there is not going to be any sustainability because sustainability starts with the community. And I think that a lot of the issues that come with sustainability are entirely man-made and the reason that we aren't sustainable in the way that we should be is because oftentimes, you know, people feel entitled to take what we take from the land. And people feel entitled to take non-renewable resources or they just don't even think about the fact that they are, you know, using up this world that I believe that we are a part of. A system that is a closed loop, um, but also takes in the aspect of people and how um, different systems affect people and the environment. People live in a very present world mindset, and I feel like we have to integrate these long-term future generation ideals into our way of living to get those current benefits and to create a world where those future long-term benefits are present-day benefits that we have achieved for ourselves in society. Uh, I'm Jay Jarvis. I'm a resident here at uh, Nicholsville uh, 22 and uh, Union. Um, yes, I live in uh, house number three with my husband, Chris. My name is Chris Erickson. I'm the internal affairs coordinator here at the Nicholsville Tiny House Village. Um, it's, a, it's a homeless uh, Almost transitional housing for uh, uh, families in the Central District in Seattle, Washington. As a concept, one of the things I've always appreciated about sustainability is it isn't just about the environment, and this is coming from an environmental scientist, mm -hmm. but it's also about economics and social equity. So as somebody who spent her life thinking about climate change and working to sort of understand its impacts and how are we going to adapt or, or mitigate um, the carbon pollution that we see now. I also think a lot about how does that mean for the health of communities. So we all know, for example, that coal-fired power plants have devastating impacts on air quality of the communities around them. What most people don't know is that 65% of the African Americans in this country live within 30 miles of a coal plant. So not all of us experience the same level of pollution mm -hmm. from carbon burning coal plants. And so there's ways in which if we actually think about sustainability and its full ramifications, it's about the environment and it's about economy and it's about social equity, we start to find even more compelling reasons to take action. One of the things that's a real barrier is you look around, right, and you see all these really well-educated people who know this is real, know sustainability matters, 
and they're not they're not doing something about it. So if you look around, if you're not say you're not part of that educated elite, you look around, you're like, what you see is like it belies making sense. If you look around, if you you're hearing from people, this really matters, and you're not seeing leadership from the political center of your life. Like you're not seeing city leadership, leadership. You're not seeing statewide leadership. You're certainly not seeing any federal leadership affecting like great policies to make you know make changes to say this is real and we're making these changes proactively. It's hard. Well, in any kind of free market economic system, you know, if there's no public outcry over what these people are doing to the environment, they aren't going to make their decisions with where they put their dollars, you know, along with that. So if the community at large isn't aware of what these companies are doing to the environment and how it's affecting them personally, they aren't going to boycott the companies that they should be and they're not going to be basically forcing these people to do what they need to do. Within a free market system, um, it's up to the people that are consumers to decide what's acceptable in their products by whether they're going to buy it. it. It's something that, you know, I think when you're, um, you know, living your life, especially when we're out here, you, you know, you're thinking more about your survival, you know, and how to best do that. And that, you know, we certainly don't take more than we need. You know, that's one thing that's nice about it, you know. Um, it's a lot simpler than when you had a place you know, like, has so much built up around you. Allowing these issues to become things that divide us, it, it doesn't help. It doesn't help anybody, but it, yeah. Communities, it's kind of that, that next level up. Um, when they come together and work together on issues. Um, you start to get into those same issues, for example, like food systems in a local way, but also issues of resilience. That's kind of one of the key trends these days of how can communities, especially smaller communities, be resilient through big challenges that might be kind of finite and um, kind of short-term or long-term challenges. And you know, we do see that um, climate is changing in lots of areas. Um, species are kind of moving north or south or um, things like that are happening and how can a community kind of deal with that? So there's like I said, short-term kind of resilience and sustainability issues, and then there's long-term issues that they're dealing with. But at the end of the day, we're always looking for people, or for institutions, or for businesses or corporations, and saying, you're putting a roadblock in my way. But at the end of the day, the biggest roadblock to sustainability is ourselves. It's how we choose to live, and what we choose to use as the definition of success. So at the end of the day, I feel like it's you and me, and all we have to change are those two things, and that's actually possible.